guys, this is Mark from North 7 Outdoors. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, today we're talking about tournament prep for bass season. Super excited. Uh, did quite the effort here to limit down to seven rods. I didn't want to get too greedy. Uh, I was like five, five, five's a good number, six. Well, you know, what's the difference between five and seven? You know, not much. <laughs> so we decided seven rods is what we're going to bring. I was really, really tempted to try the Mega Bass Orochi rod and the Mega Bass uh, JDM uh, reel, uh, but I'm going to pass on that for this weekend, uh, next weekend for sure. Uh, so first off, we've got uh, Abu Garcia Revo Premier, the fourth gen. These reels are freaking bulletproof. I love them. Uh, Okuma Helios, uh, older, old school rod. This is a seven foot heavy. Uh, they've just got such a nice bend to them. They act more like a medium heavy. They're kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, it's just a handy dandy uh, everything combo for me. Which is why we're bringing that as opposed to the Mega Bass uh, Orochi. Because uh, that thing's like a 7.5 uh, heavy. This is a 7.3 medium heavy Dobbins Champion with uh, Abu Garcia Revo Rocket, uh, the second gen 10 1 to 1. Uh, with a Whopper Plopper one time, we're not going to use that Whopper Plopper. Uh, we will be using a Whopper Plopper. I don't know where I'm going yet. There's either going to be a tournament on Balsam Lake or Sturgeon. It'll be somewhere in the Quarthas, anyways. Uh, next we have uh, um, G Loomis GL3 discontinued rod, seven foot medium heavy, with a Shimano Antares, uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, it's got a Mega Bass Dark Sleeper on there. Um, they work. They just don't uh, catch a lot of fish. I'll probably take this off, and I don't know what I'll throw on this thing, but it's again just kind of like the Okuma Helios. Uh, and Abu Garcia Revo Premier is just kind of a good everything rod. Actually, the rod itself is not is not amazing. The Antares is amazing. All right, now I'm known as a spinning reel guy. Uh, I'm pretty good with a fairy wand in my hand for sure. This is a um, Saint Croix. Uh, this is the Mojo. It's a 610 drop shot rod. This Mojo drop shot rod, holy moly! I love this freaking rod. Uh, paired with the Daiwa Fuego, a little. Lower end spinning reel it works okay. The rod is is really the better part of this combo. Uh, the only complaint I have with the Mega Bass, uh, or sorry, Saint Croix uh, Mojo, is that um, it doesn't really have the backbone. So I mean, if you're drop shotting near any type of cover or something, this probably isn't the rod to use. Um, you're not. You just don't have the leverage to to get the fish out of there. Alright, let's do this guy. Alright, so this is uh, this is the 13 Fishing, the older Fate series um, rods. 7 foot 3 medium. Uh, I don't think this is a medium heavy. We'll call it a medium. Yeah, it's a medium fast. With a Daiwa Ballistics LT. Uh, sweet little spinning reel on this. This is a good spinning reel. Daiwa Fuego is okay. I just think there's better reels for $100. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to throw with this, but it'll be something. It's got a wacky worm on there now. I think I'll probably throw a Ned Rig on it. Or if I don't throw a Ned Rig on that, I'm trying two more new combos this year. We've got, um, this is the Daiwa Tatula uh, AGS. This is a Cody Myers version. Uh, so I snagged this rod for 200 bucks new when uh, it should be like a $350 rod. Canadian. Uh, super excited. 7 foot 4 medium. Uh, with the brand new Abu Garcia Ike Revo that I have yet to try. Just put line on it the other day. Um, I might throw a tube on that, actually. I think that might be a game changer. We'll see. This combo, I'm so excited for. It's like, holy moly. I'm going to get, like, <laughs> just tweaking out here. This is the St. Croix Legend Extreme. This is a 6'8 medium with... Uh, Shimano Vanford, uh, size 3000. Originally, I wasn't like a huge, if you watch my unboxing, I wasn't a huge fan. I waited like two months for this reel. I was like, eh, I guess I'll grab that handle because it's the only one they had left in stock at the time, but it wasn't really in stock, which is why it was a couple months late. I'm hoping that this thing is as good as it feels. <laughs> uh, probably this might be the new Wacky Worm Stick. I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's get into tackle here. Uh, first off, the Whopper Plopper I'll probably be throwing 
is the 130 size. The 110 loon was on that. This is a 130 perch. We're not messing around here. We gotta get famous here, and you don't get famous by using small top water. These I may not bring in to the boat with me. I will bring them in with the vehicle and I'll kind of gauge about how things are going, whether or not uh, I'll make that, the, I'll make the, sorry, I'll make that the call in the water whether or not to use them or not. So I actually picked these up with the Mega Bass rods. I didn't do an unboxing or anything. I picked up a lot of stuff from this guy. He had a bunch of like Gary Yamamoto Senkos and Berkeley uh, Max Set Generals. Um, so I haven't really tried these colors, but I might just bring them just in case. And then from the same guy, I picked up like, I don't know, four pounds of tubes. And when it's funny, when I bought the Mega Bass rods, I'm like, eh, throw in your soft plastics, here's a number. I get to this house and the guy's like, you got a great deal. And I was like, okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Whatever. Because in the photo, I was thinking there was like one, uh, one pack per uh, compartment is what I'm thinking of, but there's like six packs of freaking Strike King tubes in this one uh, compartment here. So I mean, there's probably there's probably two hundred dollars worth of tubes, or like I don't know, fourteen fourteen packs of Strike King tubes in here. So that was pretty cool. So I actually think the tube bite's gonna go down. Um, so this year uh we've got our terminal tackle and uh and weights and all that i have a few tungsten weights here uh, a couple bullet weights uh drop shot weights a couple jigs here uh all my hooks i need and ned rig heads and all that stuff in a nice little compartment super jam packed there um all right this is cool so uh bait fuel is all the rage so i dumped about hmm, three quarters 70% of a bait fuel bottle and I put them on these soft plastics a few days ago letting them marinate they really uh, make the lure sticky uh, I guess it's water based so it would probably make sense a very slimy lures now and basically I've just put them in a ziploc bag to um, let me know which ones I put scent on so I'm just kind of ahead of the game there and separating my my product there uh, this is just a random box of more hard lures, uh, some frogs, some of the uh, uh, mini uh, mushroom jigs here. Let's see, a couple jigs here, just whatever I happen to have here, a bunch of random stuff, some spinner baits. Basically whatever I bought over the holidays and if I get desperate at like noon or something I'll start throwing them out. Um, a little dirt bait box, I'm not sure which one I got, just one of the... One of the two or three that I picked up uh, from that unboxing. Oh, not here. Oh, that's not even coming with me, so I can stay on the floor. Uh, and a whole bunch of plastics here, which is just, you know, plastics that I believe in pretty much. Just all of this stuff. Uh, a couple things I'm not putting bait fuel on. I'm not putting bait fuel on any uh, Berkeley Max Scent stuff. I'm not putting Berkeley, or I'm not putting. Uh, any scent on the gambler uh, fat aces that I like to use. Everything else is pretty much fair game, I think. Uh, so there we go. That's what I'm using for the opener this weekend on the Kawarthas. Uh, not my cup of tea, but I seem to win money on the Kawarthas on a somewhat regular basis. So we uh, can't be uh, at West Lacoon this weekend. Let's at least uh, make some money um, and get some good tournament footage. So I hope you guys are uh, enjoying your bass opener this weekend if you live in Ontario. Uh, I don't know what the weather's going to be like. There's a friggin tornado warning today. I mean they sent us all home from work early. So that was alright. Uh, I think most people don't have power. I don't know. It's pretty messed up. But anyways guys, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, nothing left to do but get ready to pack up the vehicle and uh, get up at 3 a.m. on Saturday morning so I can get to the launch at the crack of dawn. Thank you guys for watching and take care.